Our next speaker is Dr. Mitchell. I was just I was just tweeting that I'm at the Sacred <laughs> Library address and I was listening to Greta Chapman, so you can go to my Twitter account to see my response to that uh, material. Uh, I come to you today as a new superintendent of Rapid State School District, uh, but I want you to know my proudest accomplishment is uh, that's my big sister right over there. <laughs> One of the main reasons I'm here today is staying away from my office because I'm sure my phone call is ringing about how crazy I am for having school today. So it's nice to be away from that. I picked up the Learning and Leading magazine. It's a magazine from the International Society of Technology and Education the other day. And it really hit me because it really is appropriate for what we're talking about in the Chamber the Rapid City School District. I get the right school district there, Rapid City School District. Um, it said, the title of the article is, An Eight-Year Grandmother's Library. <coughs> and one of the things that I noticed as I got to the Rapid City School System, and as a lot of the school systems that I've been a part of, and just recently making a change in the Chamberlain School District was, you know, it's not even nice to think that our libraries are in the 21st century. They're not even in the 20th century. I'm not quite sure if they're still in the 19th century in our schools. And so one of the things is I recently got through my doctoral dissertation and sat in my basement doing most of the research, accessing libraries across the world, and all the academic things that I needed to do, and my ability to do that with that information, as to what we could provide our students and what are we providing our students in our libraries as to what it's going to be like in, in colleges. Because when I did have the opportunity to go to the libraries, at the University of South Dakota. It had only been four or five years since I'd been on campus, and I don't know about you, but it looked a whole heck of a lot different in just the four or five years. You know, that's the first time I've seen that video, but I saw the latest version of it, which was made, what, about six months ago. They used to make one every year. That video right there, they have it updated about every other month right now because the statistics are changing so fast. And they can do that on YouTube. You can go back and you can see the last six or seven versions of that particular video that you just saw. So the idea of accessing information, being able to access information, you know, I got to talking to some of our librarians and the whole idea that, yeah, we do research projects and they get, they have to have a book as a reference, and they have to have an encyclopedia as a reference, and they have to, they have, to have three references, and I'm going, uh, come on, you know, let's go. It ain't the grandmother's library anymore, we've got to do a better service. So, we certainly have our, our, our work cut out for us. Uh, if you want to know anything about our budget, like the governor said, uh, you go to my website and you can see my video stream. Uh, it's 12 minutes long and uh, I do that on a regular basis. Uh, if you ever want to know what I'm up to, you can go to my website. I scroll my Twitter feed, which tells everybody what I'm doing because I'm trying to get the Rapid City to figure out, you know, your superintendent does do stuff. <laughs> you know, so watch my website. I have a community blog and a staff blog that I try to communicate people with. And, um, you know, I was trying to get a message to our staff and back in Chamberlain I could pull everybody into the gym and we had 150 people and they could, I could inspire them and they could drink the poison and off we go, you know, together. <laughs> you know, getting all 1,500 of my staff now at the same spot at the same time is not so, not so easy. And I just went to the National Convention and of course the National Convention of Superintendents, it was really kind of a nice place to be because I'm only getting cut 10%, which is $6.3 million. I was sitting next to a superintendent from Wisconsin who was trying to figure out if he was going to have school because all of his teachers had called in sick and they were all up at the Capitol protesting. So things are different around the United States and things are happening, but the theme of the concert was to do more with less. And so we have started a process in the Rapid City School District with the help of Greta and many others, and I know some of you in this room are going to be part of that process, that we are very excited about. You know, right now, the biggest thing is librarians say, you got to buy me more books, you got to buy me more books. I don't have the money to buy any more books. I mean, there's a certain amount of resources we can purchase, but what can we leverage as a high-capacity thing that we can be more effective and efficient in being able to provide information to our students? And it's less about being a school librarian, and I started to talk about, why don't we start training you and start calling you information media specialists? because that's the new job description we're talking about. So we have some unique opportunities. When I first got the job here, Greta took the opportunity to get me some information on the collaboration of General Beetle. And I found that very interesting. 
And then, right after I got here, I got intimately involved with Greta and some of you in the collaboration at Western Dakota Tech, which is going to which. We just finished the design and development. Uh, we will have bid documents within the next couple of weeks, and we'll have construction within a couple of months, and we'll have a new uh, one-stop shop for the Technical Institute, but we'll also have a library, another collaborative library project. So we were talking in the, in the Rapid City School District, we are doing some work at West Middle School, and some of that included some library. So in the initial discussions there, the board said to me, hey, Greta's been pretty cool about Beetle. She's been pretty cool about WDT. You think she'd come on board for West? Well, I called her, and I'm not quite sure if there were like skid marks as she got to the meeting to talk about that possibility. And off we were to the races. But as secondary to that, what my goal is right now is libraries have to open the world to our students. And the only way to do that is to create 21st century libraries in the Rapid City School District. And so I am committed at this time to make that happen. And so what we're doing is we're starting a task force. I believe the first meeting has been established. I can't remember the date, but it's coming up this March 8th. It's coming up in the near future. And we're getting together a group of educators, librarians, elementary teachers, middle school teachers, high school teachers, principals and so forth, we're getting together people from the public school library and we're going to talk about two things as what's well, going to start the discussion. Number one, the new library standards at the state for school libraries, which are pointing to the 21st century models of libraries. And this document right here, which is from the American Association of School Libraries, which are the standards for 20th century learning that discuss the possibility of West, with the collaboration with the city, being our first and our model 21st century school library. And just recently we, we had a very successful uh, group of teachers get together to design East Middle School. And we just broke ground. And East Middle School has now set the specifications for how future middle schools will look in Rapid City. And it is my hope that this group will do the same thing. They will set the stage for the future of what we want in our libraries in collaboration with the city and everywhere else and bringing all the partners together. Because here's a couple things that it talks about as common beliefs that I really truly believe in that I'll finish up with today. We must always remember that reading is a window to the world and reading is the foundational skill for learning. And it is a capstone skill that we all understand. If a student by third grade is behind grade level in reading, chances of them being a dropout is extremely high. And so it is something that we need to do. And it's not just reading for school and reading for comprehension. We have to get it as a lifelong skill where reading goes beyond the decoding and comprehension and goes to interpretation and development of new understandings. One of the things I'm most proud of of being a brother of a librarian is she's very good about gifts and their books. And my, and my sister has the unique ability to always put books in my hand that have extended my learning and made me a better person. And so she's always done that for me, and that's, that's, that's the blessing of having a librarian in your family. The other thing is inquiry provides a framework for learning. So to become an independent learner, students must not only gain the skills, but also the disposition and use of those skills through, through uh, learning how to understand the information that's coming forward. Ethical behavior is a must and must be taught, as you know. One of the things that our school librarians say is, you know, what's going to, I mean, what's going to happen when those adults come in and they do all that nasty stuff on the computer and all that stuff? You know, don't worry about it. I mean, we deal with those things. Our kids do it. The adults do it. But ethical behavior and those things need to be taught. Technology skills are crucial for the future employment needs for our people, and equitable access is a key component for education. As you know, right now, our kids can sit at their home computer in five minutes they can pull up more information than they could find in their school library. And that's a shame. They need to understand that that library and that librarian can help them open themselves up to the world. They can connect with every library. They can connect with the information they need. They can get the things they need, even though those resources might physically not be present. 
there's an ability that if we put the infrastructure together that we can make that happen. So I'm very excited to work with Greta and many of you on that project and we hope that uh, we can really truly start the process in West Middle School. Another collaboration project and another 20 and the first 21st century school library in, in Rapid City. So thank you for your time.